What is 2? If you think this is a trivial question, think again. What are numbers? Take a moment to reflect on what this question means and how you would answer it. Maybe your answer is something like, well, that's simple, I see two trees over there, so that's what two means. What you described can't be two itself, but merely the sight of two trees. Somehow, there is a notion of two-ness that exists independently of those two trees. This leads to a deeper philosophical question. What is being? The branch of philosophy that studies being is called ontology. It offers different pathways for understanding the existence of numbers. 1. Platonism A Platonist believes in abstract objects that do not exist in space or time, but in another world, separate from our own. In this view, numbers are not part of our physical world. Platonists agree that a mathematical object, such as a number, exists, is independent of rational activities, and is abstract. Let's take the first criterion for granted for now, and assume that numbers exist. But what do we mean by being independent of rational activities? If the existence of something is independent of X, it would still exist if X wasn't present. So being independent of rational activities means that the object would still be there without humans or other smart animals around to think about it. It doesn't mean that the thing has no connection with the human mind. For example, tables wouldn't exist if no one came up with the idea that they could be useful for keeping things off the floor. But a table would continue to exist even if nobody was thinking about it right now. Being dependent on rational activities means that a thing exists only as a result of a mental product, such as a feeling or a thought happening at the very same moment. That would obviously make the table independent, and Platonists assert this applies to numbers too. Finally, what is an abstract object? Unlike physical objects, they are nowhere to be found in space and time, and they are neither the cause nor the result of anything. Let's apply that to numbers. The first part seems obvious. The questions, when is the number two, or where is the number two, are pretty meaningless. If we were forced to answer them, the most plausible answers would be, it always existed and it's nowhere. This is what we mean when we say that platonic objects exist in another world separate from our own. The question about the cause and effect is less obvious, of course. If you have one tree instead of two, you cannot hang up your hammock. But the number two in itself doesn't influence anything. It just exists. Some people think the Platonists' pathway to understanding numbers is a dead-end street because we hit a wall when trying to find out more about this other world. If objects such as numbers exist outside of space and time and they don't interact with us, then how could we know about them? Let's go back to our crossroads and try another way forward. 2. Immanent Realism Just like Platonists, immanent realists believe that mathematical objects exist and are independent of human minds, but they claim numbers do exist in our physical world. To an immanent realist, numbers are a form of property, such as redness or fullness. They say, if you have two trees, the two-ness is a property of this set of trees. But this view has its own problems. We can see that a set of two trees is firmly rooted in reality. But what about an empty set? That's basically a collection of no trees. It exists as a mathematical value. But how does that little non-existent wood fit into our physical reality? This worldview also seems to lead back to our initial problem, a particular collection of two trees is not identical to the concept of two. Back to square one. Let's go in the opposite direction to see how far we get. Three, fictionalism. You guessed it, the fictionalist takes the radically opposed view. This school of number crunches rejects the existence of abstract objects and therefore the existence of numbers altogether. 
but fictionists still need to count the trees they want to cut down before calling the gardener. So, when referring to numbers, what do they mean? To a fictionalist, an equation is not unlike a story. If it's correct, the story is coherent, but it holds no truth outside of this fictional world. It can be useful, but that doesn't make it a true story. This does not make for a satisfying worldview. Mathematics is the basis of theories about the universe that have led to pretty accurate results, so discarding it all as a nice story to tell kids triggers more questions than it answers. If mathematics itself is not true, how come it's so effective? And if it's not true, what about the laws of physics? Here we are back at our crossroads. 4. Psychologism Let's explore the possibility that numbers do exist, not as abstract entities outside our world, but in our minds. The idea may sound appealing at first, but we quickly run into the same hurdles that the fictionalists have encountered before. If we believe numbers are the fruit of our imagination, how do we explain the existence of infinitely many numbers which we cannot begin to imagine? How can we make statements about all numbers while nobody has ever thought of them all? And surely thinking up equations is not a process of hearing voices and scribbling it all down. Otherwise, how could math so accurately predict the angle and speed at which those two trees will hit the ground as we cut them down? We've tried all the avenues at our crossroads, but are no closer to defining the true nature of two. In reality, this debate looks more like a stack interchange than a crossroads with multiple branches. While philosophers are busy poking loopholes into each other's theories, mathematicians have developed their very own idea of what numbers are, and maybe not where they are, but at least where they come from. Watch our next video to find out.